No, I think he was on the door. Wasn't he on the door? Poor, poor Johnny. Okay, well, let's uh, let's start class today by, you know, really concentrating hard and sending our good thoughts and feelings to Johnny. So maybe he can get past, past that door problem. He might have bronchitis. I have no idea how that connects to being on the door, but anything's possible. All right, um, let's let's move past Johnny, and let's move back to the synthesis project because guess what I did today? You actually wrote the paragraph. What what did I do, Matthew? You wrote in the sentence. No, I did not do that yet. Sorry, I know I'm I'm a slacker. What can I say? I no, I didn't do that either. What did I do? I did update it. I added more work. That was like mixed reaction there. That was no, it was not. It shh, listen, I added five, a little five-point, almost introduction section of three sentences. It's not very long, because I found that many students were unfocused, to say the least, in their ideas. They didn't know what their ideas were. Their ideas did not connect to the definitions we discussed in class. And so I was afraid that every subsequent section, all four of those sections, would be flawed. And I don't want that to happen. So I thought the best way for us to discuss this is to take a look at your idea before we even get to examples. Cody, would you mind grabbing the door for me, please? Thank you. I'd like you here. And I want you also to be looking at yours. So you're bouncing back and forth between mine and yours. I'll keep mine on the screen if you want to take a look at yours on your screen. Synthesis project name, period number. Um, theme, the danger of animals in the natural world to human beings. Can somebody remind me what the two parts of a theme are? Oh, and silence descends. See here we face part of our problem. You don't know definitions of concepts. Come on. There's nothing stopping you from looking up your notes. What are the two parts of a theme? Mark. No, no, no. Those were ideas that students threw out. But when I went into my presentation, I gave analysis. Analysis means breaking down a theme into its different parts. And I said all themes have two parts. You're you're on the right track, Paul. No. That's right. Thank you. Kim's got it. A concept and a comment. So it's not enough to say that my theme is death. What is the story saying about death? It's not enough to say that my theme is intolerance or prejudice. What is my story saying about intolerance or prejudice? You've got to have both parts. Look at mine. The danger of, wild an or danger of animals in the natural world to human beings. What do you think my concept is? What is my theme focusing on? No, danger is part of my comment. Uh, close. Mm. That's right, nature, the natural world. I am an author thinking about nature. Nature is my concept. It's what I want to focus on, just as Poe thinks about death. He wants to think about, uh, think about that, just as um, keys in Flowers for Algernon might think about value and worth. I'm thinking about the natural world. What am I saying about the natural world? What's my comment, Mark? That it's dangerous to human beings. Mark, have you ever seen a story on film or read a story in which nature seems to be a happy place? Yeah. Oh, definitely. It's man that's the enemy in Bambi, right? The natural world's awesome. Yeah, many Disney movies see the natural world as something that's renewing, helpful, 
um, uh, in some sense, friendly to human nature. But I'm saying the opposite now. I'm saying that I'm going to explore stories that look at nature as a dangerous place. And how does it depict them as a dangerous place? Dangerous animals. Many of you are not that clear. If you have a theme, you must, in some way, express both the concept and the comment. If you have a conflict, what should I expect you to express? The protagonist-antagonist side. If, I, if you're dealing with a character, what do I expect you to express? Character is always expressed by what? The adjectives we call what in our analysis? Traits. I expect to see a character trait up there. If you don't have a character trait, you're not talking about character yet. Setting. Well, physical setting is usually what you're focusing on. Physical, historical, or cultural. You guys usually focus on physical. And that's pretty easy. How could you add to a setting? What do we usually also add to a setting when we're talking about it? Uh, no, that's part of setting. Time would be part of setting. Place would be part of setting. So it's historical, physical, and cultural. Um, what do we often say that a setting does for us in a story? Very good. Creates the mood. What am I doing? I'm telling you that your ideas must be specific to the definitions of concepts that you are focusing on. If you're focusing on setting, you better be reviewing your notes on setting. If you're focusing on conflict, you'd better review the definition of the conflict that you're focusing on. Because if not, you'll be incomplete, unfocused, and that lack of focus will ripple throughout your entire project. Who would like some proofing help? All right, Sarah, we'll start with you. Let's see where we are in here. There we are. Oh, oh, I lost you. Why did it go to the top? I didn't want it to go to the top. I never asked to go to the Hey, stop it. Bah, aha. Don't give me shortcuts to make my life easy. I'll resent you for it. Um, dangers in the city. OK, so we're talking about themes. Um, what's her concept? Sierra, what's her concept? Uh, probably not. Is she talking about danger? Is that her focus? Or is that part, that's part of her comment? Put your hand there. What's her, what's her focus? The city. Sierra, have you ever visited a city in your life other than Toledo? OK. Um, did you find it to be a happy and exciting place? Did you have fun there? Could it be a threatening and dangerous place? Could be. So what Sarah is going to do is say, cities, that's a human concept. I'm going to talk about how they can be represented as dangerous. They're not always dangerous, just as the natural world is not always dangerous. But I'm going to talk about that. She's got a concept. She has a concept or a comment. So she seems to be doing just fine. There we are. Boom. Well, it's because people update and then this constantly refreshes. Aha. What mistake has Kamira made on the top or on the front page, Max? Three skeleton key is from the literature. <laughs> it's okay, Alexis. We need the general idea, not the specific examples. So, Kamira, tell me what your setting is. Yeah, it's supposed to be in common, right? So, what's what's your general setting idea? The ocean. You seen the ocean as a threatening place? I would say setting the ocean as a threatening place. What have I just put into her topic? Uh, no, because we're talking about setting. What have I just put in there? Come on, I talked about concepts connected to setting. 
No. What setting concepts have I just placed into her title? The ocean as a threatening place. That's true, it is her main idea, but what setting concepts are related? We've got the mood, threat, right? And then which type of setting am I talking about? Physical, historical, or cultural? Physical. I've got physical setting and a mood. Now Kamira has a, as a threatening place. Now Kamira has a specific um, concept for her topic, for her entire project, and it should help her write about it. No. Well, Cody, I'll look at yours. I was going for Tim's, but... Ooh, character, hero. Is that enough? I don't know. It's hero a trait. Hero is not an adjective. Heroic is an adjective. Heroism is your abstract, your concept noun. Um, hero is an agent noun, so it can't be a character trait. So think about, okay, let's, let's use an example. I am a teacher. What is a character trait usually associated with teachers? Intelligence? You would hope, right? Okay, sometimes. Um, so Cody might want to think about the character trait that he's focusing on associated with heroes. Brave? Um, Fearless, self-sacrificing. What, what's your definition of hero? What is a hero? Someone who goes out of their way to save others. Okay, okay. Um, so somebody that acts as a protector, somebody that acts selflessly. Maybe that selflessness idea is good. Are you doing Ricky Ticky Tabby? Um, what movie are you working on? Uh, one, of the Batman movies. one of the Batman movies. Excellent. I think both heroes sacrifice their own happiness and well-being for the sake of other people, correct? So you might talk about um, self-sacrifice. And you can still talk about heroes, Cody, but I think it'll be clearer for you. If you talk about self-sacrifice, you know what evidence you're looking for, and you know how to talk about it in your paragraphs. One more, and then I would like to give you a little writing to do today, just a little bit. Going to find you. There you are. Haha. -ha. Yay. Hey, there we go. Strong will. Positive or negative? Positive. So we don't want to use the word stubborn. Um, story from unit. That October. That October. Rudy. Movie. Breaking Dawn Part One. Character. Huh? Okay. Strong will. First, it would be strong willed. ED would be the adjective form. Strong will would be a noun. Um, strong willed. How about you add, let's do it this way characters that are strong willed and assertive. Characters that are strong willed and assertive. Do you know what assertive means? Not being afraid to speak your mind or, or make decisions for yourself. Okay, does that seem to fit? Okay, so say characters that are strong-willed and assertive. Question, Paul? If you're being assertive, like, the way I do, like, too bad. You can, t you can, um, uh, you could say something like stubborn. Or argumentative. There's okay. There's a difference between argumentative and assertive, right? Argumentative is where you basically contradict anything anybody says, and you constantly talk back to somebody, um, which you're doing much better with. Uh, assertive means that in a positive way you stand up for yourself. 
Okay, They're, they are very similar, Paul, but one is a positive term and the other is a negative term. Look here now, please. This is your new assignment. What we just talked about, you already had on your plate. This is new. I want you to, in no fewer than three sentences, explain your idea in general. And if you cast up to the new instructions, it says explain the idea. In no fewer than three sentences, explain the idea listed on the title page. This explanation should be general, not specifically mentioning any story or other support. I don't want to see the title Three Skeleton Key in this explanation. I don't want to see the title That October in this explanation. All I want is general. Let's look at my example. Human beings often believe that they have mastered nature. They believe that they are immune to the effects of the natural world through their technology and science. Many authors, however, disagree. They believe that nature is more powerful than human beings. They sometimes use animals in stories to represent this. These animals and the threat they cause express the theme that nature is more powerful than human beings. What did I do in that paragraph? Haley. I'll explain what I will talk about in the subsequent examples. Yes, so every example should relate to this. What have I not done in that paragraph? I haven't named a story, I haven't named a movie, I haven't named a current event, I haven't named anything specific. So here's, this is what I'd like you to, oh, by the way, what did I bring into, I, I not only explained my idea, but what else did I bring into it? But that's already there, right? The theme is there. Human beings, nature, animals, all that stuff is already there. But what else did I throw in? Yeah, that expands on human beings, so it's an expansion. What new bit did I bring in there? Bryce? Did um, authors. authors. I mentioned authors. I mentioned how authors use this and authors develop this theme. I'd like to give you five minutes, maybe a little bit more, to write on your own, and some of you will immediately shoot your hands up asking for help. No, 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 no. I'm going to give you a few minutes to look at my example and see how you can do the same thing with your idea. Just explain it in general. And then after five minutes or so, I'll take a look at examples. I'll provide the help and help as many of you as I can before the bell rings in fine-tuning this. Okay. Um, volunteer, especially one that I haven't looked at yet. Okay. We're going to get a bunch of you, so just be patient. We'll start with Lauren. How baseball can make someone grow as a person. What's your concept? Baseball. What's your comment? Make somebody grow. So baseball, good, help, grow, yay, rah. Let's see the explanation. One of these days. Hey, what are you doing? What? Why? What did I do to it? I love Google. I give them so much business. What are you talking about? And there we go. Oh, hey. No. Be responsive. Yeah, but then that, that would prevent me from being able to use my laptop, and I don't want to lose my laptop. I like being able to do both. Many people join a baseball team simply for the fun of the game. What they don't know is the game could help them grow as a person. For example, teamwork can make a person grow. Baseball can also create friendships, and those friendships can sometimes be even more powerful than the game. I like that. That's pretty cool. What has she not done that I told all of you not to do? Sarah. Very good. She's not referring to any specific examples because guess what the specific example will be? Right here. This is good. Lauren, are all your four about baseball? Okay. Because the only thing that you could change if you wanted to, but you don't have to, is making this not just baseball, but sports or games in general. 
but that would only be if you were saying, oh, baseball here, football here, track here. But if you're de dealing all with baseball, I think that's fine. But one change that I will recommend and I'd like you to bring in is to do what I did in my explanation about talking about authors, how authors use baseball, how movies use baseball as a vehicle for writing stories about growth. Does that make sense? Cool. Good job. So where'd you go? Oh, did I pass? Where? Oh, look at that. Up, down. That helps. It didn't say left or right. Conflict, environmental. What are your thoughts? Oh. Protagonist, antagonist. I want something more specific. Many different environmental conflicts exist in film and literature. So let's see his explanation before we can go back to this. Often people in the modern world don't think of much of threats from nature. We only think about these things after they happen. Authors often stress the fact, use, emphasize, or explore. Stress, ha stress is overly negative. Authors often explore the fact that these things can very well happen. They write about these points in books, movies, etc. I think you're a little bit too general, Mansoor, in just talking about nature. What example are you getting from our stories, from, from our literature? Three Skeleton Key. What's your movie example? Oh, right. So you're talking about the island? Do you have anything else? Do you have a fine arts example or a current events example yet? What do you have? Okay. Well, maybe you are just dealing with the natural world. Because you've got two that seem like they're dealing with weather and the physical landscape and the climate, and then two that seem to be dealing with animals. So okay, that's fine. But on your, your uh, title page, I want you to specify that. Because I can have an environmental conflict in this room, right? If it's too hot or too cold, that's not nature, is it? No, that's artificial, but it's still an environmental conflict. So you haven't specified this enough. I'd like you to explain something about um, Conflict, uh, human struggle with the natural world, or human struggle with nature, human struggle with the wild, untamed natural world, something like that. Who else was up? I love impact font. You know, I've seen that. I think you're right. And I think Google still is not liking me right now. There we go. Uh, same, same deal. You are dealing with a person versus person conflict, but I don't see specifically what type of personal conflict you're dealing with. Just as Mansoor's need to be specified, so does yours. Let's talk about your explanation. People fight a lot in the world. When people fight against each other, they are engaging in person versus person conflict. This is when a person and another person fights or disagrees about an idea. Actually, not really. It's when they have goals or interests that are in conflict and they can't both have them. Remember our definitions. A person versus person conflict includes an antagonist and a protagonist. OK, true. What's your story? Ricky Ticky Tabby. So Nag and Nagina versus Ricky Ticky, right? Do you have a movie? No. 
Can somebody talk to me a little bit about Ricky Ticky Tabby and the personal conflict? What does the personal conflict um, uh, entail? What are the goals or interests that are in conflict in Ricky Ticky Tabby? Sarah? They both want to keep their family safe. And in order to do that, what do they both need to control? The land. It's a battle, it's a personal battle over land, and it's a personal battle to protect your family. So what I want you to do, Max, is specify a little bit more to the personal conflict being a personal conflict possibly over territory, you could go for that, or a personal conflict where families are at stake. And then you can find a movie that's probably specific to that. Have you gone to any current events or anything else yet? Okay. Then good. You haven't done any work that you need to roll back. But your personal conflict, um, you would say personal conflicts over territory or personal conflicts to protect family. That'll make your idea more specific and more interesting and easier to write about, too. The more general your idea is, folks, the harder it is to write about. Keep that in mind. And that's part of why we're doing this today. Okay, Paul, let's see what you got. Hmm? Don't tell me that. It's depressing. Okay. The ocean is a threatening place. Did I just pick up Maddie? Man. I know. It changed right before I did that, didn't it? Boink. See, that circle's moving. Look at that. Come on. Hard. First of all, it's sexism, not sexistism. So take the IST out. You can be sexist, and you can be discussing sexism, but you don't throw those two words together. And I think maybe I insulted Google. I didn't mean to. You say it's nice. See? Look at that. Huh? Oh. Getting there. You need to compliment it more. Awesome. Google Chrome, you are our favorite web browser. <laughs> oh. oh, we need more. Um, spirit fingers. Is that what works? Uh, Google, you are our favorite um, search engine. Google Plus, you are so much better than Facebook. <laughs> yeah, everybody's like, whoa, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> we don't want to lie here or anything. Um, all right, all right. Uh, well, you know, not bad. Okay, enough to do what we need to do. Sexism, only popes and presidents have been males. A lot of people's opinions are that women aren't capable or smart enough for the job. Everything that's right here, Paul, no, stop jumping to conclusions, it needs to go into your paragraph. Because that's explanation, right? So we're not talking about a setting, we're talking about a theme, right? What are we saying about sexism? What's your story? What's your story? Dinner party. Are we saying through the dinner party that sexism um, is based on a false assumption. Okay, then how about that as your theme? Sexism is based on a false assumption. The assumption that women are inferior to men. Who said they are? <laughs> you know, Max, they're not, they're not, I think 
One of these days, you're going to want to have a date. There are a lot of girls in this room that are going to remember what you said and spread it around to every girl they know. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll hear about it later. It'll be posted on Facebook. <laughs> Um, <laughs> hey, Max is a wonderful, upstanding, intelligent, and funny young man, and, uh, wait a minute, didn't, didn't my daughter kind of go out on a date with you when you were, like, four? <laughs> sort of, right? They were homecoming prince and princess. See, so if Max is good enough for my daughter, get, get rid of setting. Get rid of setting. How would I know what? About my daughter? Okay, we're off that conversation. Um, sexism is ba Hey, Paul, focus. I'm helping you with your project and you're not typing. I know, I'm trying to help. Sexism is based on a false assumption. Is based on a false assumption. Now we have concept and we have comment. Our concept is what? Sexism, thank you. What's our comment? Basically, it's untrue. Most men, and even some women as well, often believe that women are not capable of being a president or a pope. They believe that men are more capable and more smart, so therefore only men in history have been the president or the pope. Many women disagree, but that doesn't seem to make any type of difference. The men, you could say, are very sexist. Let's take this out down here. All right? So remove that sentence. I want you to link this to stories by what I did in mind saying, you know, authors often explore sexism and try to demonstrate that it's false. Here where I just said. Authors often explore sexism and try to prove that it is false. Anybody else tell me about this paragraph, something that bothers me a little bit that I would like to see changed? Monsieur. Yeah, go ahead. Does that make it not sexist? So are you saying that because it's religious, it can't be sexist? It's not Shh, I'm asking Monsoor. So Monsoor, let's, let's be fair, and we can say that this is a point of controversy, that um, this is a, a sharp controversy in the Catholic Church right now, that some members of the Catholic Church believe that women should have certain equal rights to men in leadership positions, in other words, clergy. Right? Um, but some believe that, no, this is a religious issue, and men and women have strictly defined roles, and the men will always be superior to the women. But then some people say, no, 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 that can't fly. That's, that's, that's not a matter of religious belief. That's a matter of tradition, and we should change it. So it's still a matter of controversy. My problem with this paragraph is that Paul spends a little bit too much time focusing on president or pope. I shouldn't see it twice, okay? Because it's a specific example, and I'd like to stay in the realm of the general. So figure out which of those president slash pope references you would like to delete from the paragraph and do so. But uh, you're, you're doing a good job there, Paul. Um, see if I can... Squeeze in one more. Max, question? How 
Yeah. Well, yeah, you wouldn't think that two pieces of software and a few tabs would overload a computer, though, would you? Fifty tabs? Sarah has been waiting patiently. Had her hand up several times. Why are you scared? Too scared to get help and improve your grade? Oh, in front of everybody. Okay. Yeah, but that's how I work. Yeah. Because what you know. Alexis, if, I, if I'm going to help you, then chances are really good that at least five other people would receive benefit from me helping you. So why should you and I talk when we can benefit five other people at the same time? Especially when I can record me talking about your work and then post it on YouTube, then there's that added benefit of humiliation. <laughs> Nothing better than that, right? Kurt. Because every pope ever has been white? Yeah, that ain't right. They have never voted the guy black. Right. Yeah, so that's racist. One would think, right, especially since, do you, do you know what the largest the largest, na largest Catholic population is in which nation? No? Okay, folks, I'm sorry. Once again, it's preventing me from scrolling. And. All right, Sarah, I, I'll provide you some help. Maybe personally, um, we've got a minute left, so close it up and put it back. Sorry we couldn't get to that last one, but that should be enough guidance for you folks.